As we all know, there's nothing better than getting out in the winter and catching good sized quality carp. And that's exactly what I'm gonna be trying to do today. I've brought you to this beautiful little fishery. It's called Court Farm Fishery near Worcester. It's a venue that I've only fished a couple of times and I know there's lots of carp in. Now I've sat down this end of the lake and I've already been told by one of the locals, what are you doing down this end of the lake, Des? It's probably the worst end. Well, that's gonna make even for a better film, I think, if we can get some bites. Now, first impressions are, we've had a serious amount of rain leading up to today, and we've also had a serious amount of windy weather. As you can see, that wind, thankfully, is gone, and also the rain has. Now, the, my first impressions of the water was, I'm, it's surprisingly clear. I thought it was gonna be really chocolate brown with all the rain that's come off the, uh, the fields and stuff, but it's not. And as soon as I seen the weather or seen the, 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 the sort of colour of the waters there, I thought this could be a real good day for fishing with expanders. So I've got a little selection of bait, nothing, you know, nothing sort of that's going to confuse anything. I've just got some pellets and some corn and I've also brought some ground bait. Now, I've set up my gear. I haven't started fishing yet. I'm really looking forward to it. I think there's going to be a lot of sort of long pole fishing because it's gone really cold this morning. There was even a touch of ground frost. And after we've had all that rain and wind, it's been quite mild. Sometimes, you know, with a high pressure that's come in, it can sort of make things really difficult. Anyway, let's get back to the gear. I'll run you through everything that I'm going to be doing today, and I'm sure we're going to have a great day's fishing. <laughs> I've started the session because I don't come to this venue and luckily the winds drop because we know over the Christmas period we've had horrendous weather and to me this is the perfect day for fishing with soft pellets. So what I've decided to do is feed, I've started at 13 metres, it's quite shallow this end of the lake, it's a bit shallow than what I actually thought it was, it's probably four foot. And looking at the water today, I thought the water was going to be quite coloured, but it's not. It's actually quite clear, which is nice. I can probably see me plummet around about a foot down before it disappears, just to give you sort of, you know, the colour of the water. So what I've decided to do is start at 13. I've obviously got the option of going long. This lake is like a snooker table at the end of this. It's really flat. I can fish anywhere from top kitten to to 14 and a half meters and it is absolutely flat as a pancake, which is lovely because I can move around, but I'm not, you know, because we're obviously winter time, I think the fish, especially the venues I've been fishing recently, they're very funny. The carp are off the bottom. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're weird. And I, I don't know if it's like that on a lot of venues you guys been going to, but on my venues, and I've already had two liners. I've actually caught a carp I've lost a little carp and I've definitely had two liners, 100% the float socks, and it's like they're off the bottom, even in four foot of water. I've just had a little indication then, and that was definitely a little baby liner. So what I've done, out in front of me, straight in front, I've fed a little ball of micros with a few expanders in it. So some four mils, a couple of six mil expanders, and then off to an angle at the same length probably about five metres, six metres away, but I would say five metres away from where I'm fishing in front of me. I've just picked the catapult up and I'm just pinging a few four mil fin pellets. Not many, like six or seven now and again. And I, the, the carp I've actually caught, I've caught it over my loose feed line. And I've caught it straight away. I've had two indications over my loose feed line. One I missed and I've caught a six pound carp. We've only been fishing for like 20 minutes. And the, the, the two indicate, I've had three indications over my micro line, which is in front of me. And I think every one of them has been liners. It's not actually been a bite. And that's the sort of thing I do on these sort of lakes. 
I'm trying to keep it simple today. I'm going to fish with like pellets. I've opened a tin of corn. Now, obviously, I've got the edges. Oh, yes. That absolutely belted under. I love this style of fishing. I think it's absolutely mint. Perfect conditions. Obviously, it's nice to get out with the wind dropping. And you've got to be patient. You've got to sit there and wait. Got something crawling around on my neck there. I don't know what that is. I've got 11 Jura slip in there. Nice elastic for all round fishing. You know, not too heavy. Because there's little carp. I think there's all sorts of different size carp in here. You might be able to get away with a 13 if you wanted to, but I love 11 because it's lighter in the pole and it's just nice to play winter carp on. 4B14 F1 Maggot, favourite float, tied to 015, and I'm only fishing with 011 bottom, which I think is absolutely man enough for this time of year. I can see that carp quite a way down, and it just gives me the confidence, fishing with 011 is strong, but it also gives me the confidence that basically they're not going to see the line, and I'm going to get as many bites as I can. Lovely fish, though. I love this little winter carp fishing. He's probably getting on for just over four, uh, probably five pound actually. Perfectly hooked. I've actually got a 16 SFL on there, which is one of my favorite winter hooks for carp and F1s. As long as you're not bagging up on great big carp, they're well man enough. So look at that. Nice court farm fishery carp. I said 20, 20 minutes, 15 minutes to get my first indication. And uh, now we're starting to, hopefully, we'll start catching a few. Don't expect to catch millions, you know what I mean? The water's, the water's quite chilly, we've had all this bad weather. I'm just getting a four mil pro expander. I've just got a little bit of bait booster on them. I've done them last night. I haven't put a six mil on yet. And one little tip is I'm punching on my micro line. I'm punching out little balls of micros. And Zolt would zoom in on that and you'll see. And even him, he just said, he still didn't know you'd done that. And believe me, recently in a lot of my fishing, even at Tunnel Barn, I've been punching out micros and the ground bait. And it's just a great way of winter fishing. We're going to get, a, I'm sure we're going to get a cold spell or very you know before the winter's out and putting these little nuggets in of micros and ground bait there we go now what i might have to do i'm just going to pick the catapult up i've not actually loose fed any pellets at all on this line i'm fishing now oh it's just the line to my left out of the way Like that. So I'll give that just to, I'm not going to give that long because I think the commotion of you hooking one when the water's clear. Just have another little quick look. And I'll just drop it in on my loose feed line. And I like to have that variation. Unless you go to a venue and you know it so well, you know how to fish it, this gives you option. Obviously, when you're loose feeding a line, You've got a little bit of noise, you've got a little area, you know, it's nice conditions today, so loose feeding is absolutely great. You can keep it all nice and tight. And I'll just see if I can get one there. I think on each line, let me just drop it in on that line. Sometimes you can actually work it out on the day that it's pointless. You, the line that you've caught one on, especially when carp fishing, you're better off feeding it again and dropping it on your other line, especially when the water's clear, especially at the start of the session as well. Now I've opted to fish a top kit in free short. Now whether I'm gonna catch short, I don't think I'm gonna catch short until possibly later on. There we go, there see, now that indication then, 
Now, if I wouldn't have had that option of moving the line, whether that was a light, a bite, or a line, I'm not sure. Another little four mil. Just a simple bolt, two little droppers. Could possibly even get away with a 4B12 if I wanted to. Especially with no little silverfish about either. I'm sure there is some roach in, um, I think there's some rud in this lake as well. I'm not sure about skimmers and stuff. And I could obviously introduce the odd bit of corn. But at the moment, I'm just sticking with, like I said, just with the pellets. So I'm trying to introduce a few expanders on with my micros. I'm putting like four or five expanders in the pot as well. Just to give, you know, just to see if I can, just to give the carp a little taster really of what you're putting on the hook. You just know you're going to get a bite. It's just like full concentration. It's great fishing. I love this sort of fishing. And trying to stick with 13 if I can. Obviously, it's a lot easier to fish at 13. If I'd have sat there for possibly 45 minutes, I probably would have put another joint on and then tapped in a bit of bait because they might not come in. But I've had a few bites at 13 now, so I'm just going to try and stick with that. I fed the edge line with a few micros, a few expanders. But I've also got some ground bait mixed up because where I've been fishing recently, even though we are in sort of winter, I'm still catching a lot of fish over ground bait in shallow water. And I've actually big, you know, big, big potting ground bait like you do. Not so much as the summer, but giving it like a big pot. Maybe not in this in the, in in your early session or with the early stages of the match, but definitely later it's got me out of trouble. Twenty sort, you know, two foot, just over two foot of water. And the weird thing is, I've tried to like cad pot little bits of ground bait in micros in which you would expect it to work in the winter, and it's not really worked. It's like you've got to give it a a heap of bait, leave it, go in, you might get one or two, and then you've got to give it another big pot and get away from it. It's really strange. It's like that then, see, I've had that liner on that loose feed line. Oh yeah, look at that. So what I'm gonna try and do, is while I'm playing that, is, a, is try and feed a few, if you can, like that. Try and keep it away from that other line as much as possible. It's just nice to actually fish with no wind. Try and feed these holes for the otter fence. <coughs> Slightly smaller one, this one. always just throw a few on that top six line a few four mils just soaked a few four mil fins up nice common beautiful size fish eh Woo. perfectly hooked look at that brilliant first half an hour on a nice winter's court farm fishery. Great fishing. I've had Five carp now in probably just about an hour and a quarter. And it's a bit weird, like you can't, there's one thing for certain, and it's very similar to where I've been fishing. If you get a liner, and obviously you strike at it, you miss it, it's like they just drift out of your peg. It's not once at the moment, especially, it is early in the session admittedly, but it's like, 
it's like they've built like spooked off because some of the liners I've had have been really like real shoot under bites or well, liners. I think they've definitely been liners because I think you'd have hooked them if they'd have been bites. The bites I've actually hit are all these little fast little indications. Um, and at the moment, it's a bit weird. It's, it's probably opposite to what I thought that the micro line, I don't think is good as the loose feed line. I've got to be very patient on each line admittedly, but my last two fish have both come off my loose feed pellet line with a formal expander on admittedly. But what I thought today with the water being a little bit clearer, I honestly thought the micros would actually be the line. Now that might change and that's why I've done what I do. I do that quite a lot on venues. I will always try and have a loose feed line some days it might not work until late in the match. I mean, some days it might not work at all. But the days it does work, it can be absolutely brilliant. And it's easy. It's as easy as picking a catapult up, firing a few pellets in. I've not actually cad potted any bait at all on that four mil pellet line. I've literally just picked the catapult up. Oh, look at that. You lovely. The bite of that, I just wish Zolt could pick that up. And that's the first bite I've had for quite some time over my micro line. There's always like in the back of your mind, you think, well, why don't I just turn both lines into a loosey pellet line? Yeah, there is like, you know, you could do that, but I like to keep my options open. You know, you can go one to the other, one to the other. And you've got to go careful. You don't have too many lines. If I wanted to, I could loose feed a, you know, a loose feed another line to my right because it's all the same depth. But you've got to be very careful about doing that, especially with carp fishing, because you've got to wait for your bites. You know, you're literally waiting for one to come in your peg. And I think if you have too many lines, you can sort of mess things up a bit. You know, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. With two lines, it feels like you can like judge it a lot, lot better. I'm just throwing a few pellets on that top kit and free. Whether we catch there or not, I don't know. It'd be nice to later on. So what I'm going to do now is do what I've been doing is, the only thing is I've had two carp quite quick. I've had one on me loose feed line and one on me micro line. So what I'll do now is go out, tap me little ball of micros with a few expanders and just sit there for a little while before I go on my loose feed line. Because not once have I felt like at the moment you're going to get a bite really quick off the same line that you've actually caught a fish on a lovely fish though beautiful size fish for winter fishing i've just put a little bit of um float grease on just to add the float stuck up <clears throat> so i was struggling to see it I believe it's still dotted down admittedly but just putting a bit of that float grease on on a black float tip, I'll just use a bit of yellow. Doesn't seem to show up yellow, it just acts like clear. They're all, they're all like peas in a pod really, like four to six pound. Gotta watch they don't go under the platforms because you are stuck out a little bit on this lake. And I fed that inside line down to my left towards the platform in about two and a half foot of water, just with a little bit of ground bait and some micros. Now whether wherever they come in on that who knows but you you have to do it but nice common there's a lot of fish been topping like three quarters away up the lake smack in the middle and i think that's probably got a lot to do with the conditions you know they've had all that rain all that wind and then today the, the temperature has gone down it's a bit brighter obviously you've got a different pressure air pressure but bloody brilliant fishing. So let's get that. I'm using the biggest punch at the punch kit. I said, just push that down and that comes out like a sort of 12 mil pellet. And you put that in, a couple of expanders, pro expanders on the top, only like four, four or five. And then what I'm gonna do, because I caught one 
I've had, I've probably went a good 20 minutes about a fish then. And I dropped it on the four mil pellet line, caught one. So I went straight on my micro line. Like that. So I'm going to sit there just a little bit. Because that's the fish, that's the, obviously the last fish I caught was on this line. So I'm going to sit there because I don't want to go on my four mil line too early because it was literally only a few minutes before I caught that one that I had one on that four mil pellet line. And that's where you've got to go a bit careful. Learn a lot of this about feeder fishing sometimes when I've been winter skimmer fishing with something like a cage feeder or a ground bait feeder. And I think I probably spoke about this before and it's really weird and really frustrating that you can cast your feeder out, you put your rod down and you'll catch a skimmer straight away. And you think, oh yeah, they're coming to the feeder. I can cast out really, really regularly. And you can't, it's like the next cast, you'll sit there for like a couple of minutes and you'll think, oh, I should have had one now. And you don't, so you wind back in, cast out. If you keep casting out, you don't seem to catch. It's like you've got to cast out, wait for like 10 minutes, even though you probably won't catch one. And then you give it 10 minutes, wind back in, rebate up, cast back out, it's the bottom, and within two minutes you get one. And that's what this is like on the pole. And if any of you guys have actually done that sort of fishing, you'll understand completely what I'm on about. It's right frustrating, it's bloody, you know, it's, it's frustrating. It's quite technical as well. So I'm just going to fire a few pellets up there. So I'm just going to sit there for another like few minutes now. You know, sometimes you might get one in between. I've not actually caught a fish where I've fed and obviously I've been sat there. I've caught one, gone back out, fed and caught another one. It's like because of the clarity of the water, they just they just sort of fade away, I think. No one really knows, but you, you go, you, it's like that. And I've gone 20 minutes of eight one, and I've caught two in less than 10 minutes. But you would think now, if there was one in my peg, I'd put a little ball of my cruise in, a few expanders. If they were having it, it ain't, I don't think it's going to be a day, maybe late on, probably too late, especially for a match angler as well. It'd probably be a little bit too late. It was, as we all know, in the winter, they can come in and start feeding right late. No, I don't think we're going to get that today. I don't think it's going to be a day where you can get one, go in, feed, and get one really quickly. If you didn't have these two lines going today, I think you would catch 50% less than what we are. That's how crucial it is. Even though I'm feeding them differently, obviously the, option, the options you've got is obviously you can go out longer but fishing with expanders, like I am, it is nice to fish sort of 11, 13 metres. Obviously, if I need to, I would have gone 14. And sometimes if I'm really, you know, if, if the venue dictates to you that you've got to fish 16, then sometimes you have, especially in match conditions. But it's a lot, lot harder to do. So like a minute or two ago, I've just fed that to my left with six soaked four mils. And I'll just leave that for a little while longer and go and have a look. Now, sometimes it goes under, sometimes it doesn't. Let's have a little look. It might not be long enough, but you've got to give it full concentration when you're fishing like this. There's no other indications. I've had, I had a few liners at the sort of in, in the first 20 minutes but every indication now seems to be a bite and it, it's on. Obviously the options, you know, even ground bait for me, maybe not today fishing where I'm fishing, but I've just come back from White Acres um, down there in a festival and ground bait was massive, especially when you didn't draw particularly great. Ground bait was massive. I actually fed so much ground bait to catch 
you know, not, oh, look at that, that was a liner. And not massive weights of fish. But if I didn't put loads of ground bait in, I probably won't do that today. I might try it down the edge. But I think on this venue out there with the size of the carp, it is going to be about feeding a little bit of bait and working each line to sort of, you know, to your advantage, really. So that was definitely a liner, that. And this is what happened earlier. I would get a liner and you think, oh, I'll drop it back in and it goes straight under and it doesn't because it's like you've spooked them off. Because no, there's no, you know, years ago, you could sit there, you'd get a liner and the float would go under. Them days seem to be, oh, saying that. <laughs> that absolutely flew, that was a carp. Literally settled and went straight down. I think you'll find that nowadays. I remember years ago, you could sit there, get a liner, and it, you'd have your float going round and, and all that. And eventually it'd go under. Now, these fish are very spooky. I think they touch your line, they bolt off. Let's see if I can get that one. So that's two indications on that line. One was definitely a liner. I don't think the last bite, I think that was a bite because it literally settled and went straight down. Could have been a little fish. But I've had no little fish at all yet, so I doubt it. I'm just hoping now that we get a few weeks of, um, you know, dry weather, still weather, where this sort of fishing will come into its own. The weather's not been good at all for sort of soft pellet fishing recently. The water's been moving around too much, towing too much. And when the water's like this, nice and still, <clears throat> there we go. I don't know if result got that on camera. That bite was what I call prophetic, absolutely prophetic bite. And that's what I've been trying to teach Zolt. And obviously he's got the hang of it because he won his, he won the, the match we done just before Christmas. So you can see what I've done then. I've gone from that line, caught one, put a little ball in, nothing. But I've had, I think I just sat there for maybe a few minutes, you know, five minutes maybe. Just lovely winter carp fishing. And it's nice to come to somewhere like Court Farm because there's lots of fish obviously, and they're a good sized carp and they're crafty. You can probably see, if you can see from the camera, I can see my elastic that far down in the water. So it's got, it's a lovely color actually. It's what I would call a perfect carp color. I love it when the lakes are that color. It's a good fish color. But they can be quite spooky. So I'm just gonna throw a few pellets in there because that's what I would do during a match, you know what I mean? Even though it might not work. But I'm quite happy with that, feeding a few, because I've caught some out there loose feeding. So it gives me the confidence on that short line. If I never had a bite over loose feed, I'd probably be potting micros there throughout the day and have a look on it. So that 11 Jura, I think it's a fantastic elastic for doing what I'm doing. Odd bite, odd fish. And if you wanted to fish a 13, you probably could, but I just love it because it's light in the pole. And it's nice to play the fish on as well. I use it a lot. Good for F1s as well, winter F1s, especially when you're catching big F1s. I think your pole reacts a lot, lot better with a lot of elastics in. And just look after them, do you know what I mean? If you catch a lot of fish on light elastics, take it back home, keep your top kit separate, and just redo the knot. Just to give you the confidence the next time you go out, everything's right. A nice little common, four pound. Don't go under the platform. Oh. Oh dear. Come on, baby. Get out of there. He knows he's trying to get under me keep that and all now. Bad angling.
<laughs> Get out of there. Nice fish, eh? Proper little weight builders, them. Probably four, four and a half to five pound. Perfectly upped. Look at him. Five pound, that. So what I'm going to do now is go back out, loose feed a few pellets on that loose feed line. I could even have a quick look in there just to see if I can get another one. I think what we'll do, we'll do that for the camera just to see. So I'm not going to feed anything through the pot. I just like that loose feeding. With the conditions as well, you can, with those little Jura catapults, you can ping like six pellets around your float. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to drop that in. Give it a few four mils. So I've just soaked them. Literally put them in the water. When I got to my peg, so they started breaking down. Just concentrate. Very negative fishing. Like that. You can always put a few more in as well. Just like four or five. A little bit of noise. A little bit of like that. And see if there's another one there. But try not to move around too much. I think when you're trying to catch an odd carp, just go a little bit careful because sometimes you'd end up going from one to the other, one to the other. You've got to give it a certain amount of time. But at the moment, we've been fishing for like an hour and 45 now. There's one thing for certain, I think, that if you catch one, you've at the moment <coughs> you don't catch another one straight away on on a line that you've caught one on but that could obviously change as it goes along so what i'm going to do is just give that just a little bit and then drop it back in on my other line and maybe like it did, did just a minute ago it went literally under within a minute Sometimes it'll happen, sometimes it won't, and that's, you know, that's fishing at the end of the day. But you're catching more by using those two lines just to keep the fish coming. No, let's just have a drop in on that other line. I said, you could have fished a 4B12 F1 maggot today because of the conditions and the depth, but I don't think it'd make that much difference. There we go perfect example of what I mean I used to do a lot of this fishing on these sort of lakes the problem is now obviously I need to go back out on that micro line put a little ball in sit there might get a bite I might not but just give it enough time for that other line to probably get a fish or two on it that's what this fishing is all about and obviously looking after your little inside line just in case top kit and free today because it's a bit colder because i don't know the venue slightly smaller fish that and you could do the same with maggots you know what i mean you can loose feed one line and not the other the smallest fish of the day that still two and a two pound eh? absolutely beautiful condition Everyone absolutely up perfectly. Look at him. Absolutely awesome bit of fishing, that. another one on this was over my loose feed line again and actually it's been reversed of what I thought today I honestly thought the micro line would be the best line but it's not I've caught a few fish there but the loose feed line has definitely been the line 
I did try short. I've had nothing short. It's just been a long, you know, 13 meters, not too long. It's just been a really, really nice day, to be honest. It's been a perfect day because it's been like a bit overcast, no wind. And I'm going to call this the last fish of the day. I think we've caught something like 20 carp. So I would say I've probably got 80, 90 pound because they're all averaging, most of them are averaging five to sort of seven pound. So we're gonna call this the last fish of the day. It's been brilliant, honestly, it's been a brilliant fishing. A lot of the fish seem to be at that other end of the lake. They've been topping like mad, like three quarters of the way up the lake. But sitting down here, and probably maybe in the shallowest part of the lake, it's been really good. And it's amazing that not once today, like I said earlier in the film, you've been able to go in catch one, go back out that, on that line and catch another one. You've literally got to get away from it, maybe catch one on the other line. The only thing I probably could have done was actually pinged a few four mil pellets over where I fed those micros as well. But I didn't, I just wanted to keep it separate, just prefer the film really, just to show you guys exactly what, what goes through my mind when I'm carp fishing on a lake such as this place. But I'm going to call this the last one. It's going to go cold. I think we're going to get a bit of a cold snap now. So hopefully you've enjoyed this film. Get the expanders out. Because when you're trying to catch these sort of fish, there is no better bait. I've not bothered with corn. I think the way it's been today, there's, no, there's been no little fish problems. I felt like every carp has been in my peg feeding. I've caught. And as I think we all know, you cannot beat expanders when it's a day like today. Calm bit overcast, feed a little bit of bait, and you're catching beautiful carp like that. Perfectly hooked in the top lip. Woo. Really enjoyable carp fishing. Let's hold him up. Great start to 2024, to be honest. I hope this carries on for me during my matches. I've had a nice little run over Christmas, to be honest, catching carp on the expanders and maggots. And there you go, a nice court farm carp to finish the day off. Like I said, I hope you've enjoyed the film, picked up some nice tips on, you know, fishing and carp on such a lake like this, when that colour's dropped out of it. And uh, like I said, don't forget to like and subscribe on the Preston YouTube channel and have a great 2024.